So welcome to the fourth session of the Instron Biomedical Testing Open House, the 6800 series and systems for advanced biomedical applications. Thanks so much for being here. I'm your host, Veronica Costa. For this discussion, Teresa Smith, Instron's product manager, will review common biomedical applications and how you can adapt one testing system to run a multitude of tests. A few of these applications include torsion, tortuosity, and auto-injection. Teresa has been with Instron for over 20 years and has experience working with our electromechanical, dynamic, impact, and rheology equipment. Many of you have likely spoken with Teresa or met her in person at your lab. Her application knowledge and understanding of our biomedical customer needs makes her an invaluable resource to our team. For today's presentation, Teresa will use about 45 minutes for her discussion, and then we should have some time for questions. So I encourage you to send in any relevant questions you might have as we go along. And one last thing that I did want to mention before we begin, for those of you that are interested in receiving the single use for free access to the Essentials of Biomedical Testing e-learning course, this is just a quick reminder that you'll want to complete the post-event survey that will display immediately following this session. And I'll be sure to remind you about that again at the end. So with that said, I'm going to turn things over to Teresa. Thank you, Veronica, for the introduction. I'm Teresa Smith, a product manager for the Low Force Applications Group at Instron. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Instron has a lot of application experience when it comes to biomedical testing. Today, I'd like to spend a bit of time looking at the new 6800 universal testing systems that Instron introduced earlier this year. Then we'll take a look at some popular accessories that are commonly, commonly used for biomedical testing applications, including non-ambient tests and advanced accessories, such as torsion and auto-injector testing. The 6800 is Instron's newest series of universal test systems, replacing the 5900 series. The 6800 series is offered in single column systems in four capacities, from 500 newtons to five kilonewtons. Table model systems are available in four capacities, ranging from five to 50 kilonewtons. Extra height systems are available on all systems with a capacity of five kilonewtons and up. The 30 kilonewton capacity table model also has an option for an extra width system. The 6800 incorporates all of the advanced specifications of the 5900, including specimen protect, the ability to add up to 13 channels and a digital I.O. board, and compatibility with Blue Hill Universal and Instron Connect. But we also improve some specifications, like increasing the standard data acquisition rate to 2.5 kHz, with an option to upgrade to 5 kHz to ensure you never miss a test event. The 6800 systems also use a brushless AC servo motor that allows increased cyclic, creep, and stress relaxation tests. Long-term tests can be run for periods up to 10 days. With the 6800, we introduced several great new features that were driven by three primary factors. How can we make testing simpler? How can we make our machines smarter? And how can we make operators safer? The first new feature, the Smart Close Air Kit, has big safety implications. This feature was designed to reduce finger pinch hazards when using pneumatic grips by closing the grips to a low pressure. Once the test begins, the system increases the pressure to a user-defined value that is set and stored in the Blue Hill Universal Test Method. This user-defined pressure should be set to a level that is appropriate for the material under test. Using the integrated Smart Close Air Kit, users can set that grip pressure directly from Blue Hill Universal. This ensures repeatable gripping for each test and eliminates the need to manually adjust a regulator. The grip pressure can even be linked to choice inputs, such as the material type, ensuring that the correct grip pressure will be used for that material. Collision mitigation is designed to help customers protect their investment and feel more confident when using their Instron testing system. It reduces damage to equipment and specimens by stopping the crosshead if a force is detected upon jog or return. If the operator accidentally jogs two platens together too far and comes into contact with the specimen, 
the specimen will detect the unexpected load, stop the crosshead movement, and actually reverse the crosshead move it, movement to unload the specimen. It will also alert the user that a collision has occurred. Collision mitigation is always on during jog and return actions. The only time it is not active is when the load cell is not plugged in or not electronically calibrated. Not only does the system stop when it detects an unexpected load, it backs off to relieve some of this load. The sensitivity of this feature depends on which load cell it's being used with, but each system can protect its matching capacity load cell with rigid compressions, compression platens crashing at a speed rate of 600 millimeters per minute. So if you have a one kilonewton load cell on a one kilonewton system and you drive your platens together while jogging in setup mode, you will not damage the load cell. This can reduce downtime and cost due to necessary repair or replacement of damage. With the new platform, we have built-in safety coaching, guiding operators through tests and helping them to stay safe. Safety coaching provides clear direction to users about when it is safe or not safe to enter the test space. It also reminds operators to perform critical tasks, including setting safety limits. Many labs have high turnover or infrequent operators, so we want our software to provide clear directions to operators so that they know what they need to do and what their machine is doing at all times. When users leave setup mode to begin a test, the border around the software changes to yellow and a message appears to warn them to stay clear of the test area. This message remains for two seconds. As the system moves into test mode, a red border alerts users that the system is in use. If a test is left running unattended for more than five minutes, this message comes up again. So anyone who comes up to the machine will be aware that a test is being run. Finally, all 6800 systems have a new feature called auto positioning. Auto positioning ensures consistent setup and guides operators through configuring their system for repeatable use by remembering the initial crosshead position for each test. Fixtures can be saved for use across multiple methods for quick and easy setup. Users can include a photo of their fi fixtures in the test method, along with notes on how to set up the load stream properly. Operators are then reminded to set appropriate travel limits. Before the operator initiates return to starting position, the lower right-hand panel shows how far and in what direction the crosshead will move, so there are no unexpected movements. After the crosshead moves to the proper starting location, the system balances displacement. This ensures all tests are started at the same location every time, improving repeatability in the lab. The 6800 new feature set makes testing simpler, smarter, and safer than ever before. A great testing system is the basis for accurate and repeatable testing. Grips and fixtures enable the user to tailor a system to test for a particular application. Manual grips are a versatile solution for many testing applications. They are available in several capacities, 100 and 500 newtons, and then one, two, five, and 10 kilonewtons. They were designed with an open front for easy specimen loading and alignment, and an op optional specimen centering device can ensure consistency in specimen placement from test to test and operator to operator. Faces slide in and out without the need for any tools, making it easy and fast to change faces for different tests. It's possible to offset the faces from center to hold lap shear or asymmetrical specimens in the larger capacity grips. Often, one manual grip is used with another fixture type to perform component testing, such as the syringe lower lock test shown here. Pneumatic side action grips are another flexible gripping solution for a wide range of materials. They use a pneumatic cylinder to exert a constant gripping force on the specimen throughout the test. Even if the specimen thickness changes significantly, significantly, such as it might for a soft tissue, the constant gripping force ensures the specimen will be firmly held. The gripping pressure can be optimized to hold a particular specimen securely without damaging it. Using pneumatic grips ensures consistency when a test is being run by multiple operators and even in multiple labs. As we discussed earlier, when using the new Smart Close Air Kit, 
the proper grip pressure can be saved in the test method to ensure it's always set correctly for that particular test. Using a foot switch to open and close the grips allows the user to focus on specimen loading without having to remove a hand from the specimen to reach for a valve. Optional jaw face shields can help reduce pinch hazards by preventing the user from inadvertently placing their finger in between the grips. There's also an optional specimen holder that reduces pinch hazards by supporting the specimen so the user can remove their hands from the area before closing the grips. The holder has an integral alignment device to make specimen loading easy and repeatable. In addition to the pneumatic specific features I just mentioned, many of the features from the manual grips are found in the pneumatic grips as well, including, including easy specimen loading and alignment, easily interchangeable jaw faces to satisfy a range of applications, and an adjustable offset for lap shear on the larger capacity models. Pneumatic grips offer a repeatable gripping solution for all materials, particularly materials that are prone to slipping from the jaw faces of a manual grip. They offer superior usability and improve productivity in the lab. There are a wide range of jaw face types that can be used with both manual and pneumatic grips. The ability to change jaw faces easily means that you can use one set of grips for a variety of applications. These serrations provide friction to help grab the specimen securely. They work well with hard tissues and plastics. The serrated grips might cause damage to soft, dish, soft tissues and compliant materials though. So a better option for those materials is surfaloy faces. These have a surface texture that is similar to high grit sandpaper. We often recommend these for use in a bath. Rubber coated faces have a compliant surface that reduces clamping stress on the sample. These work well with collagen and thin film, but are not effective for thick specimens. Line contact faces work well, work well for thin films and some textiles. They produce high pressure along the contact line, which reduces the tearing that can occur with serrated faces. Wave profile faces allow a natural pre-stretching of the specimen within the grips to help improve stress transfer. These work well with medical textiles, thin films, and some natural tissues. Very small, fragile specimens like tendons or fibers are difficult to grip, regardless of what type of faces you use. Adhesively bonded tabs offer a solution. The fiber is bonded to the tab, which is then mounted into standard grips. The tab provides the necessary gripping surface. Before the test begins, the tab is cut, as shown in the photo, to ensure the load is applied only to the specimen. When testing thinner specimens, such as nitinol guide wires, catheters, surgical sutures, and medical tubing, it's possible to see the specimen break at the jaw face faces when using side action grips. This is due to the stress concentration generated on the specimen at the edge of the jaw faces. Pneumatic cord and yarn grips were specifically designed to overcome this challenge by evenly distributing the gripping force over the surface of a curved half capstan. This design provides a gradual transition from the rigidly clamped portion of the specimen to the gauge length, minimizing breakage of the specimen adjacent to the jaw face. The cord yarn grip has a polished finish to prevent damage to delicate individual fibers during specimen loading. They also incorporate a polished guide horn to assist in easy and quick specimen loading. Pneumatics once again provide a number of benefits, including consistent repeatable clamping, the ability to optimize the grip pressure for different types of specimens, and to save that pressure within a test method. A foot switch can be used here as well for hands-free opening and closing of the grips. We've covered some ideal gripping solutions for the biomedical industry, but of course, not all tests are tension. The 6800 system can also be set up with the necessary fixtures to perform tests such as compression, needle flexural strength, and peel and puncture testing on pharmaceutical and, puncture test, uh, pharmaceutical and medical device packaging. Application-specific features are often required. Instron offers a range of these, some of which we'll look at now. ISO 11040 outlines test requirements for pre-filled syringes. Part 4 applies to gla glass syringes, while Part 6 covers plastic syringes. Glass syringes must undergo a greater range of tests than plastic syringes, as they are more susceptible to breaking. Within ISO 11040-4, there are a total of 10 annexes, all shown here. Each requires a different mechanical test, such as flange breaking resistance, 
needle penetration, closure system liquid leakage test, and needle pullout force. The standard specifies six different syringe diameters for testing. These fixtures have a modular design to minimize the parts needed to satisfy the complete requirements of the standard. Several of these tests have a torsion component, including the lower lock adapter collar pull-off force and torque resistance. These fixtures are all compatible with the torsion add-on accessory that we'll discuss later. Pre-configured test methods are available in Blue Hill Universal's biomedical applications module. These give users a head start on testing. The torsion add-on and the modular design of the fixtures make it possible to perform the complete test suite on one system. The market for lower connector devices is increasing due to an aging global population. The medical industry has moved to standardized connectors to prevent accidents and to ensure compatibility between different devices. ISO 80369-20 covers common test methods for small bore connectors used in all medical applications. Other parts of the standard tailor those test procedures to the application in which the connector is used, such as intravascular, respiratory, or norexal applications. These tests all use a test component assembled with a reference connector. The reference connector is held in place using a special adapter. A torsional lathe or side action grip provides a strong and consistent gripping force on the specimen throughout the duration of the test. Some of these tests, such as the resistance to separation from unscrewing and Annex G, have a torsion component. The torsion add-on accessory and pre-configured test methods again round out Instron's solution for ISO 80369. ISO 7886-1 covers testing for single-use hypodermic needles. Annex D describes a test method for liquid leakage at the syringe piston under compression. This test requires that the syringe be pre-filled, capped, and then tested axial under compression while a side load is applied to the plunger. After a 30-second force hold, the syringe must be checked for leaks. Annex E specifies a test method for quantifying the forces needed to activate the syringe plunger. This test is used to evaluate the force profile associated with expelling liquid from the syringe barrel. Instron's fixture is fully adjustable for use with multiple syringe sizes. In the medical device industry, many tests are performed to evaluate fu the functionality of the end product. This often can't be, the end product often can't be attached to the system with a standard set of grips. A T-slot table or component test plate helps users set up their component for testing. Both are large plates with either T-slots or tapped holes to which users can secure different shaped components for a variety of tension, compression, peel, or other testing. The component test plate and the T-slot plate both easily attach to the base of the Instron testing systems. A fixture to apply force, this could be a grip, probe, hook, or even a custom fixture, is attached to the load cell to perform development of quality of development and quality testing. Some medical devices need to be tested in vitro. The bio tray is designed to protect the base of the system and the electronics beneath the cover from damage due to spilt or splashed liquid. It's easy to clean and is compatible with many standard Instron accessories. It's available for single column and table models for both 60, 100, and 5900 systems. Many medical devices that are inserted or implanted into the body require testing in a physiological state. Often this requires testing in a solution, but other times the temperature, test, tester, temping, tester, temperature testing in air controlled at 37 degrees C is sufficient. One solution for in vitro testing on both single column and table model systems is the biopulse bath, which allows users to simulate physiological conditions by testing in saline solution or distilled water at 37C. The bath is raised and lowered by a pneumatic lifting mechanism. When the bath is in the lower position, the user has clear access to the gripping area, making it easy to insert specimens without concerns about contaminating the solution in the process. Once the specimen has been loaded, the lifting device raises the bath, submerging the grips and specimen so they are ready to test. Pneumatic grips apply a constant gripping pressure so they will hold the specimen even if the specimen thickness changes throughout the test. The bath is a protective cover to prevent fluid from spilling. The cover, this cover in conjunction with the bio tray protects the system electronics from damage, 
that could occur from accident, accidental fluid spills or splashes. Temperature of the bath can be measured and recorded in Blue Hill Universal. The Biopulse bath is also compatible with Instron's video excensometers, providing a non-contacting solution for unparalleled accuracy and strain. For devices that don't require testing in a solution, but do require testing at body temperature, an environmental chamber is a common solution. These can be tuned to optimize test temperature control at 37 degrees C. A chamber is also often used with the advanced video extensometer as a common solution for many biomedical customers, especially for night and all wire testing, so, since extensometry is required for most tests. Chambers also allow users to test at subambient temperature if required. Blue Hill Universal can record the chamber temperature throughout the test, providing a record along with the rest of the test data. Instron service provides temperature verification services, so users can be confident they are testing at the proper temperature. For some large or long medical devices, testing in a bath or chamber may not be practical. The BioBox offers an alternative solution for those applications. A single column test frame sits within the bio box, so it's possible to test using full travel, making it an ideal solution for long elastic specimens such as catheters, sutures, and gloves. The operation panel and emergency stop button are relocated outside of the bio box to ensure the user maintains full access. Um, sorry, to make sure the, by, the user maintains full access during the test. Access to the test space is ergonomically designed with a unique dual door panel arrangement. This makes it easy for customers to reach in and swap out specimens and grips. Almost all Instron grips, fixtures, and platens can be operated within the temperature ranges of the box. Just as with the Biopulse bath and chamber, Blue Hill can save temperature data and the temperature of the bio box can be verified by Instron service. This data from some catheter testing clearly illustrates how much of an impact temperature can have on the physical properties of a device. For these catheters, increasing the temperature from 28 to 37 C reduced the modulus by nearly seven megapascals, showing how the temperature of the body makes the device more compliant. This is critical information considering the catheter may be in a patient's body for an extended period of time. We've re reviewed a number of grips specialty fixtures, and options for physiological testing. Now we'll take a look at some more complex applications. Functional testing of many pharmaceutical and surgical products, including packaging, often require combined axial torsion loading. It's impossible to know how a lower connector will work or how effective a pharmaceutical bottle cap will be without functional testing that includes a torsion component. The torsion add-on two is a 20 newton meter capacity motor with unlimited rotations that can be added to a new or existing 5900 or 6800 axial torsion or axial testing system. It was designed to perform simple simultaneous, simultaneous axial and torsion testing of devices, but it's also capable of running either axial or torsion single axis tests. There are a number of benefits of, to adding the torsion add-on to a system. Combined loading offers greater convenience rather than running tests on separate axial and torsion systems. The torsion add-on doesn't change the footprint of your axial system, so it saves valuable benchtop space in your lab. This, but this is especially important in the age of social distancing. It's also cost effect, a cost-effective approach to performing simple multi-axis multi -axis testing rather than getting a dedicated axial torsion testing system. The torsion add-on doesn't reduce the axial travel of the system it's used on. So it's possible to, to run all of your tests still on the axial load frame. Blue Hill Universal has dedicated tension, torsion, and compression torsion method types for use with the torsion add-on. I'm going to show you a video here with some applications. This video shows a number of common applications for which the torsion add-on is used. We just saw some bone some bone screw testing to ASTM F534. Lower lock, lower lock testing can also be done with a torsion add-on. As it can, as this, and the system with uh, an axial system with the torsion add-on can perform all the axial tests as well as the torsion tests for both of these standards.
The torsion add-on can be used to test pharmaceutical packages, including child-proof and non-child-proof bottle packaging. The usability of pen injectors can be tested with the torsion add-on system. This testing ensures that the cap can be removed and the dosage can be adjusted by a typical patient. These systems are also used for lower lock test testing to ISO 11040. We see here an unscrewing of the cap. And once again, those, those standards also require some testing that involves has axial components as well. And the torsion add-on system can be used for, for all of those to meet all the, the sections of the standard. We looked at many com common applications for the torsion add-on during the fixture section. For example, the lower lock adapter collar torque resistance and rigid cap unscrewing tests in ISO 11040-4 for glass syringes. The resistance to separation from unscrewing and disconnection by unscrewing that are covered in ISO 80369 for small bore connectors. ASTM D7860 to measure torque resistance for child resistant and non child resistant packaging. ASTM F543 for testing of medical bone screws. Many of those. We could also run pen injectors as seen in the video, and medical tubing is also a common application for which the torsion add on is used. As I mentioned, many of these tests also have axial components. So the torsion add-on provides the ability to test both the axial and torsion components specified by these standards on one system. This is only a subset of the testing possible with a torsion add-on. Many other applications can be performed with the right fixturing. There are many gripping options available for use with the torsion add-on. Axial torsion grips, that were designed for combined loading are available in mechanical and pneumatic versions. Tor lace chucks are useful for a wide range of components and can be adjusted even for irregularly shaped objects. A three jaw chuck is commonly used to hold a specimen directly or to hold a probe or other fixture component. These torsion grips with adjustable rubber coated posts were designed to accommodate various size specimens. A component test plate can also be used with the torsion add-on accessory. Application specific fixtures are available as well. Standard mechanical side action grips with proper faces, for example, for example, rubber faces used with glass syringes are also commonly used in conjunction with a different fixture to satisfy numerous applications. Next, we'll take a look at the automated XY systems. An automated XY stage allows the user to test a group of specimens or test multiple points on one component. The system has a great deal of flexibility and can be used for numerous applications. The XY stage mounts to the base of a single column or extra wide table model testing system using standard bolt mounting holes. The top surface has a bolt pattern to which you can secure test fixtures to hold the specimens or components to be tested. As you'll see when we look at applications, fixturing is key to successful testing with an XY system. We offer standard sizes of 150 by 150 millimeter and 300 by 150, 150 millimeters. All control of the XY stage movement is now incorporated into Blue Hill Universal software. It's built into the same test method you use for test control and data acquisition. In a moment, we'll discuss applications that can be run on an XY system. As we do, keep in mind the tests you run in your, in your own lab. Many tension, compression, and bend tests that you run on a manual system 
can be set up on an XY system as long as the proper, proper fixturing is used. I'm going to play a video that shows some tests being completed with an XY stage. The system seen here is performing a cap removal for force test on syringes. The XY stage moves the specimen to be tested into position under the crosshead. The crosshead moves down and the pneumatic grip closes onto the cap before performing the test. After the test, the cap is dropped into a collection box on the side of the stage. Compression and flexure tests are straightforward from a fixturing standpoint, but as you can see here, tensile testing on an XY stage is also possible using pneumatic grips. Here, liquid leakage tests are being performed on sealed vials. These springs used in a surgical tool are tested to ensure the spring constant is within specification. This keyboard isn't a medical device, but many devices have buttons or screens that are tested to ensure they'll stand up to regular use. Many of the photos we'll look at in the application slides show individual tests being run manually, but it's possible to run all of these and many others with an XY system. It all comes down to having the right fixturing to support multiple specimens or the component. There are a number of standards that provide test requirements for needles and syringes, including pre-filled syringes. An XY system can easily be adapted to run many of these tests, such as liquid leakage tests that are performed on vials, such as those shown in the photo, and on syringe closure systems. This could be a needle shield or tip cap. The test determines whether the closure system or plug can withstand possible excess pressures inside the device during filling or shipping. Syringe breakaway force is the measurement of the initial peak force required to depress the plunger. The glide force is the average force required to continue moving the piston. This evaluates the quality and consistency of the silicone lubrication within the empty barrel. All that is needed to run these tests on an XY system is a fixture to hold multiple specimens and a probe or comp compression platen. From these photos, it's easy to see how a glide or breakaway force test can be adapted to an XY system using a fixture that is similar to that used for the liquid leakage test. The needle pullout force tests the fixation of the needle to the, to the syringe. This determines whether the bonding process is appropriate. The lower lock adapter collar pull-off force test checks that the collar will not detach from the syringe during use. Cap removal testing is done to ensure the cap will remain in place during transport, but that a user will easily be able to remove it before use. These are all tensile tests that could be used running manual or pneumatic grips on a standard system. To perform these tests on an XY system, pneumatic grips are required, as we saw earlier in the cap removal video. This is a pneumatic three-draw grip that is ideal for these cylindrical specimens. Surgical tools and components are often tested by simulating the forces that are applied to them while in use. These may require pneumatic grips for tension tests or a simple probe, such as that used to perform compression testing on the springs shown here. Crush testing of pharmaceutical pills and tablets is performed to quantify their compressive properties, ensuring they can be packaged and handled without degrading or being crushed. Pharmaceutical bottle seals undergo puncture testing. The seal needs to be strong enough to protect the drug during storage and transport but the consumer needs to be able to easily remove it to access the contents within. Monitoring devices and medical analyzers have buttons and screens that require testing. The XY can also be used to test dental and orthodontic adhesives. 
the automated XY system provides a number of significant benefits, throughput, efficiency, repeatable, repeatability, and safety. An XY system will have significant impact on throughput. The time of an actual test itself will be the same, whether you run it manually or use an automated XY system. The overall test time is significantly impacted by the time taken to remove each tested specimen and then properly insert and align the next specimen. These are the areas where an automated system can greatly contribute to lab throughput. I performed some, some benchmark testing on springs from a surgical tool. I ran 50 tests manually. I ran each one immediately after the other with no downtime in between. It took nearly 16 minutes to complete this testing. Next, I tested 50 springs using the XY system. This took about eight and a half minutes. I was able to test 46% more specimens in a given time period using the XY system. This extra time may make the difference when it comes to time to market or releasing a product for shipment. As I mentioned, I ran the manual test with no interruptions or distractions. In reality, an operator has interruptions every day, such as meetings or breaks. During these times, no testing takes place. So this 46% estimate is actually rather conservative. In addition to increasing lab throughput, the XY system also frees up a good deal of the operator's time, since the operator no longer has to stand by the system while the tests are running. They can perform other tasks, such as data analysis, completing test reports, or measuring and preparing the next batch of specimens for testing. Based on the benchmark data discussed in the last slide, in addition to increasing lab throughput by 46%, over the course of an eight-hour shift, the operator will gain three and a half hours of time back that would otherwise be spent in front of the system manually running tests. There are many factors that impact repeatability, including specimen placement and alignment. Misaligned specimens will show up as variations in the test results. Even with specimen alignment tools, proper alignment often relies on operator experience and the care taken when setting up a specimen. This is compounded when testing multiple points on a component. When a user is manually setting the components up on a system, it's difficult to ensure that each component is tested at the same locations. An XY stage provides repeatable test locations from sample to sample, ensuring that the data being generated is comparable. An XY system with a well-designed fixture, such as the VIO fixture shown here, addresses the challenges around specimen placement and consistency of test locations. This reduce, reduces the influence of operator experience on repeatability. In addition to, to the direct worker compensation costs that OSHA estimates at $1 billion per week, there are also a lot of non-direct costs that are related when there are injuries in the lab. One of these is reduced staff, leading to lower throughput. There's also the potential for lost expertise if the operator injured is the only one with, it, with the experience to run a particular system or a test. And any accident in the lab may cause other operators to have less confidence when using the equipment. The automated XY system reduces the risk of injury but by reducing the need for operators to put their hands in the test space. It offers better ergonomics as it removes the repetitive motion that is required when manually loading specimens. Because the XY system removes some of the testing challenges around specimen alignment and test points, operators with less experience can be trained more quickly, will find it easier to use, and will be more confident when running the system. This lessens disruption in the lab. Next, we'll move on to the injectable drug delivery device market. This is growing at an incredible rate. A recent market study showed that 55% of all drugs in the R&D pipeline will use an injectable delivery route. This includes drug delivery using pen injectors, auto injectors, pre-filled needles, and needle-free injectors. This growth is mainly driven by two factors, the increase in people experiencing severe allergies and an increase in uh, chronic diseases, such as diabetes or arthritis. During development and production of these devices, testing generally combines governmentally regulated standards along with internal quality tests. ISO 11608 
for needle-based injection systems is the most widely used international standard. Part one and five are the most applicable sections of the standard for the testing of auto injectors and pen injectors. Part one is generic and focuses on the dose accuracy and reliability of the device. Part five specifically tests the automated functions, outlining the requirements to ensure device is both safe and simple for a patient to use properly. This is critical as these devices are often used by patients or another person who has received no training. The characterization of the activation force to start the auto injector fluid expulsion, needle length after injection, total injection time, and needle guard lockout confirmation are also covered in this section. In the early stages of the development of these devices, many of these functions were tested individually on different pieces of equipment. This was a lot of work for manufacturers to then manually compile the data from various systems. It's time consuming and it's susceptible to errors. As the injectable device market has grown, so has the requirement for fully integrated systems. The standard electromechanical frame with the additional addition of specialized equipment allows manufacturers to streamline their design evaluation process, potentially improving their time to market. This system shows an auto injector test stand running with Blue Hill Universal. The operator places the device into the cap insert and secures it in the grips. Then they press start to begin the test. First, the crosshead moves up to remove the cap and records the maximum force. Once the device is clear, the shuttle moves by pneumatic pressure and the crosshead will move down to engage the needle shield. The software captures the activation force based on user criteria. Then the needle is released and the injection of medicine begins. The needle length is measured using an optical micrometer and is recorded in the software. An integrated precision scale provides a live measurement that is fed back to the software and used to determine the total ejection mass and volume. A proprietary algorithm is used to analyze the mass data to calculate ejection time based on the initiation and settling points of the, of the data points. Lastly, the crosshead moves up, locking out the needle shield, and then moves back down to measure the override force or to simply ensure that the lockout me mechanism is functioning properly. The use of integrated systems like this one reduces operator errors and increases lab throughput. These systems are modular in design with the ability to add required functionality, including auditory sensors for click detection, blast drop blow off, active pressure monitoring, and more. This modular system design gives users the ability to adapt to rap rapid changes in the development of their own injector products. Guide wires are most commonly made out of nitinol or stainless steel. Guide wire manufacturers, manufacturers, especially in the cardiovascular industry, are interested in quantifying the frictional forces of guide wire by simulating how a doctor, nurse, or surgeon would insert the catheter through a patient's body. This type of test is often referred to as tortuosity testing. Instron solution for tortuosity testing uses a horizontally mounted testing system with two force, low force load cells to average force measurement measurements during testing. I'll show you a video right now so you can see the system working. To perform tortuosity testing, a single column system is laid horizontally. The crosshead of the system is extended and two pneumatic grips are actuated independently through the software. The stationary top grip is open as you see here, while the moving grip is closed, pushing the wire through the glass membrane and silicone path. Once the guide wire is pushed to the end of the crosshead travel, the stationary grip closes, holding the wire in place while the moving grip releases and retracts. Once fully retracted, the process repeats to push the wire further into the membrane. The measurement from the two low force load cells are averaged to measure the frictional force. 
Instron's Blue Hill Universal Traceability Module helps customers achieve 21 CFR Part 11 compliance by giving users the power to know who did what, when, and why, and prove it. Of course, this is a critical part of any system used in the medical device industry. Traceability can be used on all of the systems we have discussed today, from a basic single column system with mechanical side action grips to an auto injector system. There are three main components. Revision history, which allows users to view all changes made to methods, such as the test rate and calculation changes. Revision history of tested samples, such as the date and time the test was run and the end of test reason. And revision history of report templates, including details on the changes made to the graphs and results tables included in the report. The second component is the ability to use electronic signatures to replace the need for manual signatures. And last, a searchable audit trail that tracks all changes made to all Blue Hill Universal files. The audit trail also tracks all system level usage, such as user logins and logouts, and can identify when someone has tampered with a Blue Hill Universal file. These features, revision history, electronic signatures, and audit trail, when used with Blue Hill Universal security features enable users to know who did what, when, and why in their test system, and have the power to prove it during an audit. During an audit. Instron also offers IQOQ services to help customers meet 21 CFR Part 11 requirements. This includes qualification of the system and the software, including calculations, so you can begin to use your Instron quickly. That's a very high level summary of Blue Hill traceability. If you're interested in understanding in more detail how this module functions, I recommend attending the webinar titled Protecting Data Integrity and Having Traceability in Your Testing. That will be presented by Elaine Gordonov, our software product manager, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you very much for listening today to my review on how to configure a system for biomedical testing.